Hi, this is Dr. John Martinez with Coastal Sports and Wellness Medical Center in San Diego, California. Today we'll be talking about VO2 max testing and heart rate training. For those of you that aren't familiar with either, sit back and listen. So one question I get quite a bit from our athletes is what is VO2 max testing and probably more importantly is how can it help them with their training. Now one of the systems that we use here at Coastal Sports and Wellness is the New Leaf VO2 max testing system. It's a fairly robust system, fairly portable, and we've had some really good success with it. Now VO2 max testing actually measures the maximum amount of oxygen that your body can take or use during exercise. And it's important to remember that different types of exercise can have different VO2 max results. So for instance, a VO2 max test done on the treadmill or running may be different for, an, for that same athlete who does a VO2 max testing on their bike while cycling. And one of the reasons for that is that you're actually using different muscle groups or you're using those muscle groups in a slightly different fashion. And one way may be a little bit more efficient than another. So it's, the analogy to that would think about how energy efficient different cars are, how, the miles per hour that different cars get. Now, one of the reasons we use VO2 max testing is to go back and look at how at the quality of the training programs that our athletes have. And it's important to know that a well-designed training program can actually increase an athlete's VO2 max by almost 20% if it's designed properly. So going back and testing throughout the season helps us benchmark whether or not the training is proper or if the training actually needs to be altered somewhat. Now the VO2 max testing that we do here, we do either on a bike with a stationary trainer or on a treadmill. Now the athlete will wear a neoprene mask connected to it by a tube to the testing machine that records the amount of oxygen inhaled and the amount of carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide exhaled. And the test takes about 30 minutes to complete. And then the information we get is actually helps us calculate the different heart rate training zones for the athletes when they go out and they do their training. Now the first heart rate zone we'll talk about is zone one, which is your recovery and over distance training zone. This is the easiest training zone that folks should train at. It helps improve fat utilization or fat oxidation as an energy source and it also helps to increase the mitochondria density in muscles as well as increase blood capillary density which allows increased blood flow to the muscle. And the thing to remember is that the more blood flow you have to the muscle, the more oxygen you have. Now zone two is that endurance zone. This is the more moderate intensity zone. This improves your conditioning and endurance. This is usually where those longer rides and longer runs are done at. Zone three is that lactate or that tempo workout. It's obviously a higher intensity. You start getting actually up towards the lactate threshold. It's usually a 30 to 60 minute effort, fairly intense, uh, pushing the limits as far as your lactate threshold. Now the zone 4 heart rate zone is the interval training zone. This is your speed work and your interval workouts either on a track or on a bike trainer. These should be done once a week and it's important that you have proper rest in between the intervals as well as in between interval workouts week to week to prevent overtraining. These should usually only be done once a week, maybe twice a week, depending on the athlete. But it really needs some strict supervision by the coaches to make sure that an overtraining syndrome doesn't occur. The, the final heart rate zone is at zone 5 or sprint interval. This is a, that short high intensity burst usually used for a finish line sprint or that final kick for runners. These intervals are very short, 15-30 seconds in total length with a much longer recovery than the actual exercise time. So for folks that are doing a 30 second interval, we'll give them a two to three minute recovery and then have them repeat. And again, just like the zone four, this is only a very, very small amount of your actual training volume. This should only take up again, maybe one session a week, usually incorporated into another workout. And it's important that the coach or the athlete also factors in recovery after this again to prevent any type of 
over training. So that's a quick overview of VO2 max testing and heart rate zone training. This is Dr. John Martinez from Coastal Sports and Wellness Medical Center. If you want to find out more information about our VO2 max and blood lactate testing facilities, look us up on the web at www.coastalsportsmedicine.com.